in our last video of on division we talked about uh, three important parameters that we need to know very well numerator denominator and quotient so in this video we are going to build upon that concept and see three common ways by which this is written and how it is being calculated and as you can see from the screen we have n standing for numerator and d standing for denominator and the answer will be equals to the quotient so the number on top is called the numerator the number that is dividing is called the denominator that is the divider and the product is uh, the quotient so in each case we're going to walk three examples to really show that they all mean the same thing when we see all these questions and one other thing we want to keep in mind is that for us to be successful with our understanding of division as a topic in mathematics we want to remember the multiplication very well because if we know multiplication the vision will be very easy to understand so let's start with uh, the first example where we have numerator over denominator equals to the quotient so i would like to start with uh, that first concept of n over d where we have n over d equals to the quotient our first example will be 20 divided by 2 so in this instance our numerator will be 20 our denominator will be 2 so if we write it in that format it will be 20 over 2 and if we look at 2 going in 10 so we are asking the question how many times will 2 go in 20 so from our understanding we know it will go 10 times so we have 10 and if you just want to quickly check how our multiplication can really play into this you see that if we multiply 10 times 2 it will give us 20 let's look at another example we have 18 divided by 3 the first thing we want to do is how do we write it we have 18 over 3 our numerator is 18 denominator is 3 so what is this question asking us how many times will 3 go in 18 so if you want to quickly do that you can draw the stroke or you can pause the video to actually achieve that so we have 6 times so that will give us 6 because if you multiply 6 times 3 it will give us 18 so that is the second example another example under this case will be 36 divided by 4 what we are saying is that 36 as a numerator will be on top and 4 as a numerator will be below so 36 divided by 4 we are saying or asking the question how many times will 4 go in 36 so that will be nine times and if we want to check our work we can say nine times four that will give us 36 so gradually you can see that our understanding of multiplication is very important let's look at the second case where we have d outside so we have two denominator numerator and we are going to arrive at the quotient so let's look at our first example we have 42 and we have 7 so what will be our quotient we're asking the question how many times will 7 go in 42 that will be 6 times and if we multiply 6 by 7 it will give us 42 the second example under this pattern is when we have 56 and 8. So our numerator is 56, 
denominator is 8. We are asking the question, how many times will 8 go in 56? That will be 7. And 8 times 7 will give us 56. So we can see 7 written below. So we have 8 times 7 giving us 56. The third example is 54. divided by 6. Again, our denominator is 6. Our numerator is 54. What is the question? How many times will 6 go in 54? And that will be 9 times. So we have 9. That is 9 times 6 will give us 54. So in this case, we can clearly see that the same process is being followed. The denominator always used to divide the numerator and the answer we get to be the quotient. So the third example, we have the numerator, the denominator, and our final answer will be quotient written on top. And if you want to use some few examples, let's start with uh, 27 as a numerator and we are dividing by 9. So in this case, we are saying 27 divided by 9. Our numerator is 27. Our denominator is 9. That is, how many times will 9 go in 27? If we look at our multiplication, it will be 9 in 3 places. 9 times 3 will give us 27. And if we say 3 times 9, that will be 27. If we subtract, nothing is left. So as you can see, it's a 3. The second example will be 72. Divided by 9. So we are saying how many times will 9 go in 72? That will be 8 times. 8 times 9, 72. So if we subtract, we're going to get nothing. So here, in the first instance, 9 is the denominator, 27 is the numerator, and our quotient is 3. And in the second example, 72 is the numerator, 9 is the denominator, and 8 is the quotient. That's our final answer. Then the third example, we have 80 and then we have 8. 80 divided by 8. That is, how many times will 8 go in 80? If we check our multiplication very well, it will go 10 times. And if you want to check 10 times 8, it will give us 80. If our answer is wrong and we subtract, we should be able to arrive at a number here. But the moment it's equals to zero, it shows that our answer is correct. So you will notice one thing in these three examples, that if we know our multiplication very well, division will be very easy to solve. So we want to go back you can review the video on multiplication and when you perfect your understanding of the multiplication you can watch this video over and over again until you are able to grasp the concept so no matter the form in which the question is written you'll be able to understand that they are talking about division thank you for watching the video and if you like what you're watching please subscribe I'll catch up with you in the next video. Thank you.